Heavenly Father, I need and love you more, more than I can say, I need you more, more than yesterday, I need you more, than ever before, I need you more, I need you more. We are in a universe of change. Everything comes and goes. This is the Buddhist view and it is our experience gradually with time. Everything comes and goes. So we reach for an eternal domain, universe, state of being with our Heavenly Father. And this bit's not Buddhist of course. Except, in substance, it's not so different because they, I don't know, in some sense, seek a oneness with all. Hmm. Anyway, no matter here. I'm aware how we make wonderful relationships and and then they're left behind. We move on or well even people die, don't they? In the sense that leave this universe anyway. It's the reality, it's something that drives you into God's arms and embrace. You realize you so need a Heavenly Father, our Dad. And so appreciate the company of Heaven. Eternal Heavenly Host. His family as we understand it, as we visualize it. you more, more than yesterday, I love you more, more than words can say, I love you more, than ever before, I love you more, I love you more, more than the air I breathe, more than the song I sing, more than my next heartbeat, more, more than anything, I love you more. More than yesterday, I love you more. More than words can say, I love you more. Than ever before, I love you more. I love you more. Well, you might know that as a Christian song. It's a worship song, isn't it? It's a devotion. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for you, for you with us and in us, and always, always, always. Just thank you, Father, that you've given us to know you to know how much we need you. You are our satisfaction. You are what satisfies the great, great longing within us. Love you, Lord. Love you, Heavenly Father. Love you, Dad. Thank you, Dad. So this is dedicated to my church, MLC, Manifest Love Church, that's got rid of me. I bless each one of you, not that you need it. I'm sure God blesses you anyway.
but just to say how much you've been a blessing to me, a joy, how much I've loved being with you and worshipping with you. So, so loved worshipping with you. Some of you know God as I know God, as Heavenly Father, even as Dad. As I understand it, all of you will know God as I know God, as Heavenly Father, as Dad. And we'll know a love for each other that does not die, that does not pass away. An eternal fellowship with our dad and his family. What we think of as the heavenly host. Who are both his consolation and ours with him eternally, both into the future and even into the past and through the present. For the eternal is eternal, cannot be changed. And you are birthed into the eternal in this universe of the transitory that God has made universe of change and uncertainty, time, space and matter, have experience of the fruits of good and evil. You have not yet learnt that you are not here to change the evil. But to know of it, see it, and in part experience it, that you know to reject it, avoid it, like the plague, <laughs> which we're so familiar with in the last few years, and to embrace all that is good. You are not actually here to change this universe, but to be birthed into life eternal through the experience of it. We are children, you see, being taught in a most magnificent, vast school. I think possibly an eternal universe of change, ever here, in which a Heavenly Father births us into life eternal. It's not that you need to strive and war against evil. It is that you are simply to be come devoted to our Heavenly Father as the personification of all that you truly value and all that you find increasingly to be eternally good. You can achieve this through gratitude, thankfulness, we practice by being thankful for every good thing. And then some of the minor things in trust to God, that they are actually a blessing. And as you see this as time passes, you can extend your gratitude 
to the whole of your experience here in what we call life, which is in fact transitory life. And in so doing you embrace life eternal. You come to know God in terms of John 17, which you know I'm obsessed with, obsessed in the best possible interpretation of such a phrase. You come to know that this is life eternal, to know thee, Heavenly Father, and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. The obvious that the story of Jesus speaks to us of the goodness of God. He personifies the goodness of God to us. Try not to reject those that don't yet believe this. For they are simply as younger children. And have a purity of sincerity. By the lack of understanding and grasp. They're not to be loved less, therefore, for being younger and immature in the faith. But on the contrary, to be so helped and nurtured, the more. So don't reject, don't cast out those that are not of your view and opinion. Certainly protect your view and opinion, for bad company has a bad effect. But find ways of loving and caring that achieve, that achieves what God purposes, which is, as I understand it, that everything is, he has made after all, we do hold that he's made everything, comes to completeness. To perfectness, as only he knows it. We value what we have made, and he has made all. There is nothing that can stop an all-powerful God bringing all to the perfection that he understands. I hold, and perhaps you will hold, that he's an all-powerful God and all-loving, that he values all that he's made, all. And if anything were made that he did not make, well, if it was life that could feel pain and suffering, he would care and value accordingly. And nothing can stop him achieving, therefore, the goodness and the goodness for you and those around you. Nothing can stop him. It's not that you have to achieve it. You simply have to be aware the goodness of God. So whatsoever is good and lovely, think on these things. You will then spontaneously want to thank him for all these things. And you will grow in the loveliness of God and enter into life eternal. Bless you. Lord bless you and keep you cause his face to shine upon you and within you, now and forever. Lord, give you joy and peace, his shalom, health and beauty and goodness and loveliness and all blessing, all that is good, all that he values, for all. Thank you, Dad.